Hi guys, Evil Deer here. So today I wanted to speak about another story about my honeymoon in Europe, and particularly this time in France. Now see, we were at the end of our trip in France, we'd been there for I think two days, we're actually in Paris, sorry. I should be specific about these things. So we were in Paris, and we we're just about to leave. Now we went to the train station, we we're going to catch a train, we we're going to take a train which would take probably about a you know, I think it's like four or five hours to get down to Barcelona. So it's, it's a long trip. Well, maybe it's more than that, maybe it's six hours, I can't remember. Anyway, so it's a long trip. And I'm sitting here at the train station, me and my missus, we've got our bags. I've got like two giant luggage bags. She's got like all the little carry-on ones type of thing. And we're just sitting down and I'm reading the screen up there and saying, boom, boom, you know, 30 minutes before the train goes. So I'm like, okay, that's good. You know, a little bit of relaxation time. It's 11 in the morning, it's all good. My missus goes, ooh. There's a makeup shop over there. I want to go check that out. And I'm like, no, 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 stay here. Let's just wait because I don't want to miss this train. You know, this is a lot of money. And she's like, ah, I'll be back soon. Stop being so pestering and annoying. I'm like, fine, fine, fine. Come right back here. This is where I'm going to be waiting for you. And she's like, yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. So anyway, she takes off. And I'm sitting here and I'm playing with my, my iPhone, just looking at stuff. And I look at the time and I go, it's like 15 minutes before the train goes. Like, when's she coming back? And then I keep playing with my phone, I don't think much about it. Five minutes before the train's going, I'm like, okay, I'm standing up all stressed going, where is she? Like, how did she just get lost? Like, she literally went over to the shop just over there. Like, how did she get lost? And I'm like, okay, that's it quickly. I better run over there. So I'll run over and have a look in the shop. No sign of her. Look in the shops nearby. Still no sign of her. I'm literally flipping out at this point. I'm like, what do I do? I just have to wait by the train and hope that she comes. Now, most people would think, Evil dear, why don't you just pick up your telephone and give her a phone call? You know that thing that you had sitting in your pocket? Yeah, well, it doesn't quite work like that. See, I had my phone, which had international roaming. Well, it had some international roaming left. But her phone was completely flat. I remember that because I tried to do something with her phone previously, and she's like, no, 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 my phone's flat, and plus I've got no international roaming, so we can't use my phone. And I'm like, why don't you organize that? And she's like, ah, I don't need it, you know, I waste the money. Anyway, so I can't call her. I'm sitting here by the train waiting to leave, and then the inevitable happens. I watch the train as it slowly goes away. And guess what? Still no misses. So at this point, I'm like, I can, I've got two options. I can sit here and wait for her to come back thinking that maybe she just got lost in some shop looking at products and randomly at some point is going to go <gasps> and then come running back to me. Or I could go looking for her and hope for the best that I just randomly stumble into the shop where she's at. So I'm thinking, hmm, well, I really don't want to go walking away because if I go, she'll possibly come back and then she'll be like, Oh no, where is he? And then she'll run away and, you know, it just, it just becomes this cat and mouse game in Paris where none of us know anything. We don't speak French. Luckily, a lot of French people speak English, but yeah, we don't speak French. Anyway, so I'm sitting here and then like an hour passes. I'm like, no, she's not coming back. I really hope like, you know, someone hasn't stabbed her and taken her wallet or something. And as soon as I thought about that, I went, oh God. She's got all the carry-on bags. She's got my wallet. She's got my passport. She's got everything. I don't have anything but my phone. And you know what? Just as I'm thinking of my phone, I look down at it. Beep. 20% power left. And I'm like, uh, I've got a charger, but where am I going to plug it? I'm at a train station. So now I'm stressing not just about the fact that she's not going to come back. I'm stressing about the fact that I've got no money. So she's like, you know just decide to pack up and go, yeah, I'm sick of this man. I'm just going to ditch him here in Paris and catch an international flight home. I'm screwed. I don't have anything. Now, so that's an hour's past. I'm at this point literally flipping out and I'm going up to the, like the, the local information stands. And I'm like, hi, sorry, I didn't speak French, but could you possibly call, you know, the, the, the big train thingy to, you know, call her name out and the guy's sitting here. He clearly understands English, but he's ignoring me. He's like, no, don't understand, don't understand. I'm like, fine, and I, I started getting tricky. I tried to use Esperanto, and he's just looking at me like, you just sound like you're trying to bastardize French right now. I'm not going to talk to you. Like, he's giving me that look. I know he understands me, but he's purposely ignoring me. I think it's some of that old English-French hatred going on right there, but I'm Australian. I, I'm not part to that. Anyway, back to the story. So, at this point, I'm like, w w what do I do? I, I've just got to wait for, you know, 
wait possibly for a phone call or to keep walking around the station. I'm walking around, I'm looking in shops and looking at stuff. My phone's down to 5% now. And I know, she knows my number, but if my phone goes flat, we will never find each other, like literally. So I'm thinking, okay, I need to power this phone. So what do I do? Okay, um, I look around, oh, yeah, there's a vending machine over there, they need power. So I walk over to the vending machine, I'm like, hey, I've got the sword, I'll just unplug that vending machine and plug my phone right in there and I'll be all sweet. And right at that moment, some big burly security guy goes, sits down right in front of it and just goes, pulls out his phone and starts looking at it. And I'm like, you freaking kidding me. So I walk around, there's no freaking more vending machines anywhere. And it got to this point where, oh, just swapping arms, it got to this point where I'm walking down the street going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? My phone's now on like 2% battery. And the most random thing in the world happened. I happened to walk past this shop that sells exercise equipment. And right out the front of the shop, they've got this bike. It powers your phone while you ride it. And I'm like, ooh, that might work. So I plug my phone into it and I start riding. And I'm riding and I'm riding and I'm like, dum, 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 dum. You know, all shaking about. 10 minutes passes, beep, 1%. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm gonna have to do like a full freaking eight hour workout to charge my phone. So I'm just sitting here. I'm just riding away, trying to charge this phone. And then this random shopkeeper just keeps coming out every like, I don't know, like 10 minutes going, uh, do you like the bike? I don't have a dual French accent, sorry. Do you like the bike? Uh, uh, do you want to discuss purchase type of thing? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm just trying it out, like sweat pouring out of my face. No, it's all good. You know, I've really got to put this thing through. It's, you know, put it through with the real, the real test. And she's like, oh, okay. Walks away, comes back 10 minutes later. I'm like sweating all over, like completely like covered in water. Like someone's just throwing a bucket of water at me type of thing. She's like, are you sure I can? And I'm like, look, I'm just going to be honest with you right now. I seriously need to charge my phone and I've got nowhere to go. Please don't kick me out. And she's like, I kind of figured that out half an hour ago. Just keep riding the bike, it's all good. It looks good for the customers. I'm like, okay, I'll keep doing that. <gasps> type of thing, I'm almost dying at this point. After a while, the phone gets to 60%. I'm like, look, I'm done in, that's it. I can't do no more. I get off this bike and I walk back to the train station, sit down at the point where we were meant to meet, and guess what? Ring, 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 ring. <gasps> I get this phone call from some random number. And I answer it, and it's my missus on the other end. She's like, <laughs> And I'm like, just calm down, woman. I understand that cry anywhere. I've heard that a million times. And I'm like, well, where the hell are you? And she's like, well, where are you? And I'm like, no, where are you? And she's like, I'm on the train. Where are you? And I'm like, what are you doing on the freaking train? And she's like, well, I came back and I didn't see you. So I, I jumped on the train. I thought you were on the train. You're on the train to Barcelona. And she's like, type of thing and I'm like oh god what do we do now she's halfway to the train in Barcelona and I'm like oh, well, when can you get off and come back because you know you got passport money everything it's getting dark here it's like at you know three in the afternoon by now but I'm still paranoid about the night and she's like oh well according to the the conductor person it's like another freaking four hours before I can get off at the next stop and then change over and hopefully come back and I'm like Jesus Christ woman you've got my number I'll just keep this phone charged call me when you get close or back and she's like, yeah, yeah, I've got to hand the phone over. I paid some dude like, you know, 30 freaking euros or whatever to just use his phone for like this tiny little bit of time. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm just stressed at this point. And she, then she hangs up and I'm like, okay, it's all good. I've got this sorted. I'll just charge my phone. That thing's outside the shop. So they're not going to like drag it in or anything. It's all good. I'll just sit here. I'll wait it out. She'll be back soon. And then it hits me. I need to go to the toilet. Yes. And you know what the worst thing about freaking France and all of Europe is? Now... For you guys who are from Europe, this is probably normal, but for us Australians, it's not. You guys pay for your freaking public toilets. We don't. It's just a public toilet. So I'm like, la la la, walking down the public toilet thinking, la 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 la, I'll just go to the Oh no, that's right, you pay here. I haven't got any money. I'm checking my pockets, I'm looking everywhere, and I'm like, oh god, I really need to go. Thank god it's only a pee. But I'm like, oh god, please. And I get to the toilet, I'm like, hi, look, I'm just a, a foreigner, and I just need to use the toilet, and the guy's standing at the door, like, there's this guard there. He's like, nah, money, end it over, mate. This, this shit ain't free, this is capitalism. And I'm like, oh god, so then I end up standing outside of this place. Mind you, the whole time I've got these two giant bags, 50 kilos worth, standing at the front of this toilet going, Hey mate, can I have a buck? Yeah hey mate, uh, mate, you got a buck? Well fuck you mate. No, I didn't actually do that, sorry. I was just like, hey mate, can I have a buck? And no one would give me money. And I'm like, no, I've got to get inventive about this stuff. I've got to get, yeah, I've got to get creative. So I put on my thinking hat. 
And I start walking down to the train station. I'm thinking, you know what? There's going to be hotels around here. They're going to have toilets. And so I walk down the road and I look for the first hotel I spot. It just happens to be a five-star hotel. And I walk inside, like, pretending I'm scoping the place, you know, looking for a room. People are going up and may I help you with your bags. No, no, it's fine, my friend. It's fine. It's all good. I've got this sorted. Anyway, he walks away and I'm like, what the freaking hell is the toilet? And I look around the corner and I see this toilet down the end. And I'm like, ha ha And I run down there and I'm dragging my giant bags as well behind me. And, of course, key card locked. And I'm sitting here going, oh. So I'm like, that's alright, someone has to use this toilet eventually. So I'm sitting around the corner hiding behind the bush like this type of thing going, I'm waiting for you to open. And eventually someone comes out and I'm like, straight past them like, hop in. I just hope it's not a security guard. Because if, if it is, I'm going to get that pee out before he gets me out of that room. I swear to God, even if I leave it all over the tiles. But it was all good. I got it out. I was done. I walk out of that room feeling like a new man. Go, yeah, that was the best ever. Anyway, so yeah, I'm now sitting here going, now what do I do? Okay, well I guess I'll just go sit at the train station like a bum. So I go back to the train station, and in these bags, the whole time, like I said, I got no money, I got no passport, I got nothing. All I've got is clothes, and lots of them, like, you know, winter clothes types of things. So I'm like, maybe if I just wrap myself up in some clothes and sit here, because it's now getting cold, it's probably about 7 at night. Um, there's a lot of people at the train station, so it's I'm not like an obvious bum or anything. So I start wrapping myself up and sitting on a... Like this, uh, this little bench, and there's this French police are walking by, and these guys are like packing, man. Like the French police, they've got some massive weaponry. Anyway, they're walking by looking at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, uh, you're just waiting for my train, you know, it's all good. Anyway, so they're, they're walking away, uh, they're leaving me alone. It's now like 10 at night, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to sleep here. And, and my phone's getting back down low on battery again. It's down to 20%. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, what is the freaking battery power on an iPhone? This is the worst phone in the world. Thank God it's a work phone. Anyway, so I'm sitting here going, stressing again. Okay, I'm going to run out of power. Either I'm going to go exercise. Well, at least it'll keep me warm. Or I'm going to try and find some accommodation for the night. So I'm like, well, I've got that Esperanto book. You know, like the uh, the passport to server. I, I nicked it. Well, not nicked it. it was, that's a lie. It was given to me by the nice Swiss couple I met. Um... And in it, it's got all the names, but it's like five years old, so I don't know if I'm going to just call some random person who's like, Oh, sorry, uh, the person you're calling right now, they passed away like three years ago. Don't be a jackass. So I'm like thinking, what do I do? What do I do? And then 11 at night rocks about, finally I'm going to have a phone call, and she's like, Oh, where are you? I'm like, oh god, what's she done now? And she's like, I'm at the platform. And it turns out she was at a different platform, but she was back in Paris, thank god. So I finally go to meet her, I'm furious, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna rip this girl, new one. I'm gonna tear her to pieces, Arr, type of stuff, you know, I get my big dog face on her, Arr. and I see her, and she's like, Arr, and then runs up to me, and I'm like, oh, heart melted, give her a cuddle type of thing, and yeah, we're back together, but now, it's almost 12 at night, and we have to find a hotel. So we spend the next hour going from one hotel to the next, to the next, looking for a friggin' room, because there's a billion hotels, but no goddamn rooms. We finally get a room at a slightly higher price than normal, but then managed to crash probably about one in the morning. And at that point, my missus is like, I'm sorry, but it's your fault. And I'm like, what? How's this my fault? And she's like, you, you didn't make yourself obvious to me when I came to the train. And I'm like, whatever, I'm just passing out now, okay? Clunk. Anyway, so that's my story for today. Well, this one lasted a while. Sorry about that, guys. So yeah, that's my story. If you enjoyed it, share it around, share the shit out of it, make my missus feel bad about ditching me in Paris. At least she didn't actually ditch me and just get on the flight back to friggin' Australia. And so yeah, share it around, like it, tell me if you want to hear more, and I'll find some more stories for you because i got billions of them and most of them involve my wife. So, it was great having you here. I hope to see you in the next video, and if I don't, you will regret it.